Hello there. Welcome to Third Thursday Lunch and a Divorce Lawyer. I'm attorney Peter Olson, Chicago Family Law Group. Thanks for joining us. This month, I'm flying solo. Uh, back to some uh, exciting guests in the upcoming months. We have, I think, three actually scheduled to be uh, interviewed and recorded. But uh, this month, we're doing another in an ongoing, if infrequent, um, episode where we're breaking down a divorce case, sort of to the, oh, five to seven basic parts of a case. Because, yeah, on the one hand, divorce and legal matters generally are pretty complex. Uh, I, I don't think it needs to be as unclear or sort of a black box as people tend to, uh, to view it. So this month, we're talking spousal support and attorney's fees. Those are big issues in cases. I don't know if you think they're related or they don't sound related to the average person, but they are very frequently sort of two, two parts, two sides of the same coin in a case. So um, I'm going to deal with them together today. So uh, what's, what's the quick intro kind of hook? Well, spousal support and attorney's fees, meaning the idea that your spouse, either during the case or after the case, has to pay you sort of a monthly income. That's what I'm talking about there. Spousal support, legally, we call it maintenance. And then attorney's fees, the idea that the other spouse, again, either during the case or sort of at the end of the case, has to contribute to your attorney's fees, give you a lump sum of money or pay, basically pay your lawyer's bill sometime, sometimes. That's what we're talking about here. And um, they're related because attorney's fees and spousal support are in play when there's an imbalance in generally income and property between the parties. So if that fact situation is your fact situation, both of these tend to go together. So, I mean, I feel like in a lot of cases, I'm filing for both of these things, even in the same pleading. Maybe it's like a petition for maintenance and a, and a contribution to attorney's fees because the facts that undergird both of those situations are so common. So let me look at a couple hypotheticals that I've sort of drawn up here on my little Microsoft Word blank document and just show you how it works a little bit. So you can have a good grasp on understanding how spousal support gets set and how attorney's fees, um, a contribution to attorney's fees by your um, husband or wife uh, get handled here. So I'm going to just pull up a little screen share here. And we're going to take a look at a uh, my little made up family. Okay. So here's my little made up family. I hope everybody can kind of see that. Okay. We've got Jennifer and Joel Peterson, who have been married for 14 years. And Joel is a pilot with United Airlines earning $140,000 per year, $11,666 per month. And Jennifer worked as a stay-at-home mom for eight years. So she wasn't in the workforce for quite some time, but now of late works part-time as a teacher's aide, earning $25,000 per, per year. So this is a very classic uh, spousal support case. And, and that meaning you have a great imbalance of incomes, right? I didn't, I didn't really look at my percentage, but right, quick math would be what, at least more than five times Joel earns more than five times what Jennifer earns. So you have a great imbalance here. Joel's earning enough where spousal support is going to be appropriate. I feel like once in a while, you'll have a case where there is a great imbalance, but you know, if somebody's earning 40, if the higher income is earning something like 30 or 40,000, it's just oftentimes not even likely that spousal support is going to be in play, period, just because 
it's hard for somebody to just support themselves. I feel like at 30 or $40,000 a year plus pay spousal support to their ex-husband or wife. So that would be my only caveat. It's an income imbalance situation, but then there's also probably a little bit of like higher income earner does need to be at a certain income level. I would say somewhere maybe 50, 60 per year and a Above before spousal support is really going to be something a court's going to look at. So what are we looking at here? And let me talk through this a little bit. So this is how maintenance is looked at in Illinois. Okay. We have an amount issue. Boom. What's the amount going to be? And then what's the duration going to be? Because those are really the things you're talking about, right? Um, how's it calculated? Spousal support is a math formula. It can deviate, but for purposes of this quick 20 minute video, I'm not gonna go down every little rabbit hole. Most cases are set with this math formula. The higher income earner or the payor of maintenance is gonna pay, the math is, 33% of Joel's net income in this case. So here we go, right? I've, I've set Joel's net income. That's just his after-tax income times 0.33. So that's his monthly, that's a third basically of his monthly net income, 2549. So that's one part of the math formula. Uh, one third or 33% of the higher income, higher income earners net income. And then we're just subtracting we're subtracting 25% of the lower income earners net income. So Jennifer's 25% uh, is the 444. So there, there we go. We end up with 2105 as being the monthly payment paid to Jennifer, the lower income earner in this case. Is that pretty clear? It really is a pretty straightforward uh, math computation in uh, in most situations. So that's the picture, picture there in terms of the amount. So Jennifer, um, what's my fake person? Jennifer Peterson's getting $2,105 per month in uh, spousal support. Now, duration is also, um, I'm not going to pull up the law, but there are, there, there are different um, basically percentages uh, that the length of the marriage would be multiplied by to get the duration, okay? The long and the short of it is that any marriage more than 20 years, you're going to be talking about a permanent, basically unlimited number of years on spousal support. But then anything under 20, there are different percentages. In this case, it's 60% for a person married 14 years. You know, under five years, it's something like 0.2. There are different little cutoffs by how many years specifically um, a person has been married. But what's the duration in our case? It's a 14-year marriage, 14 years times 0.6, which is what's in the law ends up with 8.4 years of maintenance spousal support. So that's the picture in my little hypothetical here in terms of how, how much and how long will uh, Jennifer Peterson, in our case, receive child support. She'll be getting 2105 for 8.5 years. So I hope that helps you just get a picture on it because, yeah, I mean, if you're if you've been somebody who's been out of the workforce, maybe staying at home with the kids, maybe you had an illness or disability, and now a divorce looms, um, this is a lot of money uh, and a big issue to kind of protect yourself on, right? I mean, right, 2105 a month is what, probably 25,000 additional income per year for eight years. You know, that's serious money there. What is that? 150, uh, more than. 250, 225,000. So this is not something to be sort of 
loosey goosey with, you know, negotiate a little bit. Maybe, maybe the monthly you could mess around with, but the idea that if you're entitled to spousal support, you need to, you need to make sure your attorney is going to get it. And we would certainly be able to get that for you is a big, uh, big issue. All right. So I'm going to stop the screen share for a second and then just bridge much more briefly on the issue of uh, attorney's fees because attorney's fees are simply, you know, again, they're going to apply in cases a lot like the scenario I just put out there with Joel and Jennifer, with the big things being the income and balance and sometimes, you know, just kind of the, the party's access to assets and, and property to pay their attorney. Um, oftentimes one, one part of the couple might, might sort of control the purse string, so to speak. And <clears throat> excuse me, even if, even if there's some good money sitting around in an account, maybe there's a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars sitting around, but you know, my wife is the one who does all the budgeting. Um, you know, I need to get a court to order attorney's fees paid. Um, and then another thing kind of to think about is, is sort of even just, is there an imbalance of what's being paid to each, uh, to each lawyer? Because that's really an important issue in Illinois uh, family law that sort of there needs to be a balancing of the playing fields when it comes to the access to, to, a, good, uh, to a good lawyer. So let me just pull up a couple examples for you and just kind of just talk, talk your way through the issue of attorney's fees. Now, And I'm going to give you a couple examples from real cases of ours. This was a case where I think the um, the wife in this case, whose name was Raquel, earned maybe two thirds to one third of William or Willie's uh, income. So the court ordered a one thousand dollar attorney fee contribution to. Chicago Family Law Group, our law firm. So that was the picture in this case. Like I said, it was just, I think somebody earned about 70,000, 75,000, somebody earned in the low 30s. This was another case of ours where it's a crappy order that's hard to read, but um, an interim fee contribution of $10,000 where each party was actually ordered to be paid $5,000 uh, was, was ordered. Um, and again, this was a case where I think one of the one of the spouses earned seventy five or eighty, and the other one earned maybe one forty. So again, that imbalance of incomes. And then just I think my last last little item. I have a case right now that's finishing up. I'm literally going to do something on this case in the next day or two, where one of the parties earns 120,000 a year and one of them earns 40. And I'm quite confident the court is going to order a $5,000 attorney fee award to our client in this case. So that's a little bit of a breakdown for you, Divorce Deconstructed, on spousal support and attorney's fees. I hope you find this helpful. And if you're headed down the divorce road and there is a great imbalance in income or access to assets and property, you really need to um, you know, just be up to speed on what you're entitled to. So I'm gonna end it there. Um, thank you again for joining us and check us out at familylawchicago.com.